All right. Hello and welcome to How Do You Drew? This is a Drew Barrymore podcast brought to you by the Drewzium.com. And sponsored by our friends at Positive Medium. I'm Anne. And I'm Ashley. And we sound so official. <laughs> <laughs> we are so professional. You know what's funny? This is I'm already gonna jump off topic. But I've <laughs> I've noticed in this season of the Drew Barrymore show. Uh-huh. I don't know if this is like an intentional thing. I kind of feel like it has to be every single time they come back from commercial Drew's mid conversation with someone. It's like every segment now. It has to be intentional. <laughs> I'm like, I guess she's trying to just seem real natural. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of funny. I'll have to listen to it and then I'll let you know if it's jarring to me as like a really picky trying to make things flow person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me know. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, here we are. <laughs> here we are, episode 24. All right. Thank you for coming back, everybody. Yeah, we have a lot of oopsie daisies, follow ups, mostly follow ups, but I think because we recorded so early last time, we've got a lot to go over. Yep. The first thing, and this is actually from two episodes ago. So I think that would have been our Ever After episode, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So our friends on Instagram at Drew Barrymore Rebel. She let us know that we made a little mistake when we were counting People magazines. Actually, I made the mistake because you didn't do it. I did it. (laughs) The method that I used to count them was I went into our photo shoots file and searched People. Yes. But I didn't think about the fact that, well, I'll read her comment. So (laughs) Drew Barrymore Rebel said, the episode guide for the podcast is top notch with photos and links. Thank you. But you missed the people <laughs> cover with Drew and Will's wedding day. And I was Whoops. like, oh, shoot. Yeah, because that one, I didn't, it's not you in our files. It's a photo shoot. Exactly. Yeah. So that was totally a goof. But then I noticed because you were so kind to find People Magazine, which I never found, and God. send it to me, the new one. Yep. And uh, inside it said that it's her 14th cover, but I couldn't find a 14th. And I, I searched a little more diligently this time so So basically we went from we thought 12 first we thought 10 then you found 12 (laughs) then we thought 13 and now 14 so supposedly supposedly okay so maybe we'll figure it out yeah if somebody knows one that we're missing let us know but I I mean we're talking about like a feature we're not talking about like a little inset because there are some of those but that can't count because then it'd be more than 14 Yeah. Let us know if you know 14. We want to see proof of this 14th cover. Um, We might just be forgetting one really big, like a wedding issue, possibly. (laughs) Like there wasn't a Tom Green cover. I know there wasn't. (laughs) All right. Moving on. Do you want to say the thing we forgot? Speaking of Tom. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. What we forgot to mention in our SNL, which yes, to be fair, I don't feel like we were saying here's every single time she cameoed on the show, but this was kind of a big one. Yeah, so, but we had talked about it before. Yeah. Speaking of Tom Green. (laughs) Yes. In 2000, Ashley remembered that there was a Saturday Night Live where Drew and Tom had a fake almost wedding on the episode. And we did talk about this on a previous episode, but we just forgot to mention it in our Saturday Night Live episode, which we didn't intend to be all-encompassing. Right. But this was a big one just because it's, I don't know infamous in its own little way I think it is but if you guys do want to hear more details about that you can go listen to our year in review 2000 episode we and we yep. talked about that way more in depth yep definitely. So that's why we so, didn't have to mention it again <laughs> but you know it was still I guess an oopsie to leave it out I guess I guess yeah and it looks like you figured out I know you talked about Chris Catan having a nickname yeah I think we talked about that off mic I don't think we mentioned it oh okay (laughs) while recording I thought of it later I was like wait oh there's some nickname that him and Drew have for each other like I remembered her talking about it on her show recently okay and I like tried googling forget it like google can really fail me a lot of times when I'm looking for something like this I get it um and then I was like was this a conversation with Jimmy Fallon so I went like and tried to find that I couldn't find it so I asked Renata at the wonderful Drew Barrymore Brazil if she could remember. And she was like, it has to be somebody who was on SNL who she was talking to. So yeah. she listed like a lot of SNL cast members who have been on the Drew Barrymore show recently. And when she said Seth Meyers, I was like, oh, that's totally light bulb is going off. So I went back to find when Seth Meyers <laughs> was on and I found the story. <laughs> oh my God. I know. I was so relieved. It was driving me crazy. 
So um, Drew and Chris Catan, when they see each other, they yell out rooftops and they call each other rooftops. And this is because there was a time that they got drunk with friends and jumped from roofs into a pool. Together? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking it could be her LA house that this happened at. Oh, because totally. People used to jump in that pool. Yeah, it had a low like roof and then the pool was right next to it. So yeah, <laughs> yeah that makes sense. But I thought that was fun. And like we talked about him so much in our SNL 99 episode. It, I felt like, ah, I wish we could have included that. So yeah, there it is now. And plus that's fun to imagine. Come on. <laughs> I think it's I worth know. it. Very different time in her life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Also, speaking of Saturday Night Live, um, we had done that episode, recorded that episode, and then they started to air um, promos for Albert Plaza hosting one in which Chloe Feynman draws the impression of Drew, <laughs> like right after we had so talked about So we thought that it. was a fun little cosmic coincidence. Yep, absolutely. And I felt like her impression in this, even though it's like one line, it felt a lot better than her original one to me. Like, yep. I feel like she's getting yep. better at Drew's voice. <laughs> I think so, too. And, they, you know, it's one of the ones she pulls out. So I'm sure she's always like refining it a little bit. True. Time. But that was fun to see pop out again. Yeah. OK, last thing is just because I feel like we've talked about a lot of her exes in so many episodes that like when they're coming up now, I consider that a follow up. <laughs> does, yeah. does that work? <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. So twice on the show recently, she's mentioned Luke Wilson. Okay. The first one, she was saying that he used to wear socks with Adidas slides, and she was so turned on by that. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried so hard to find a picture of him wearing them, but the only thing I could find, I did find a picture of him wearing slides, but they he didn't have sock nice. bombs. I know. I also feel like Drew used to wear Adidas slides. Yes, I I know. I in fact one of the things I was like, oh, I think he's wearing them in this picture. She was wearing them, not him. She was wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it in the ones where she was naked in the parking lot? Um, no. Maybe she is. I didn't check those. I think that she's wearing it in those. <laughs> okay, I want to look. Um, okay. and then in another episode recently, and she even like at the beginning of the show which you might not have seen many of these because they don't show them very often. You have to like get into the full episodes, but like she'll pull up in front of the studio in her car. Have you ever seen okay. these? No. And she'll do, a, she's like still like not in hair and makeup or anything. And she says like a little something and then they cut to her on the stage. Okay. And, uh, so she even mentioned, oh, we might talk about Luke Wilson. And she was talking about on-screen kisses. And she said that she had been so excited to kiss Luke on screen because he was yeah. her boyfriend that he gave her these like pursed lips and it wasn't at all what she was hoping for. Oh, no. Luke. That was funny. I know. Being professional. Right. He's coming up a lot lately. That's so funny. And then she also mentioned recently that Justin was the one who told her to go after Kristen Wiig for Whip It, which I thought was cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But, you know, she leaps out the part where supposedly he was originally supposed to be in the movie, too. But then they broke up. That's <laughs> she right. She didn't mention that part. I could see Drew being like, you know, who'd be a dream in this? Kristen Wiig. And him being like, you could totally get her. You it know, sounded like... like it was his idea and that she was oh. like, oh, I could never. And that he was like, she'd be perfect. And obviously it worked out. So was that another like he was on her show again? Um, no, she was telling this on Drew's News. So I think Ross asked her if like an ex ever gave her good like career advice or something oh, like that. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, so I thought that was fun. So we've got a really special piece of mail today. <laughs> we think we do. I haven't listened to it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know it's from our dear friend Tess, um, who we have met many times, spent lots of time with. And we've probably mentioned Tess many times, but let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> You've got mail. Hi, Ashley and Anne. It's Tess. I know I've already sent you some text messages, but I thought that Jolena's audio message idea was really cool. So I'm sending you one too. <laughs> um, I just really love the podcast and the thing I love the most about it is that it just feels like I'm hanging out with you guys. Um, it's just so reminiscent of the times that we've hung out together in person and we live so far apart. So it's just really special to sort of feel like I have that 
that time with you. I sort of wish that Aww. all of my friends who lived far away from me had a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but I love every time you mention the message boards and Drewbies, and sometimes you mention me, and it just brings such a big smile <laughs> to my face. Um, I just think it's such a happy, um, fun podcast, and I listen to every episode. So thanks so much. Yeah. Um, love you guys, and hopefully see you soon. <laughs> Oh, Aww. I love that. It's me also too. just like made me feel so good to hear her voice. It's been so me long. Too. Oh, Tess, we love you so accent. much. <laughs> I, I feel I feel so lucky that we have you like still kind of in our corner and around. Like I know. we love you so much. Oh, that was really, really cool. Thank you, Tess. That just yeah. made my day. <laughs> yeah, me too. And we, like, thank you for supporting us. I'm glad that you enjoy it. We, you know, really appreciate your feedback and yeah, she's it. like in the key demographic, so it's good, <laughs> good that it's working. <laughs> yes, she is. And we'll, we'll never stop talking about, you know, the grapevine or our droopy buds. Like, you guys are all such a huge part of our lives. And oh, so, awesome. Yay, thank, thank you. you Tess. Anybody else wants to send in mail or uh, voice memos or whatever, reach out to us. How do you drew pod at gmail.com or on our Instagram at how do you drew pod? We're here for it. Yep. We love it. We love it. Yay. That was okay. awesome. Are you ready for the Jerusalem of the week? Oh, someone's picking up, you know, those cool little isms that we do. I sure am. What you pull out for us this time? I just did it today because it was on Drew's News podcast and I thought it was a good one. That's perfect. <laughs> All right. And I quote, <laughs> I wear big girl underwear as in the underwear themselves are a big girl. They're big. They're hefty. They're girthy. You could use it as a parachute in emergency. It's a total baby diaper, like safety pin the side sitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Drew. <laughs> oh, perfect. Just perfect. I am a person who in the last like several years has just completely embraced high-waisted underwear and I will never go back. So I'm like, <laughs> Drew, I'm with you. <laughs> So good. But Drew, I feel I feel you. That's amazing. And that's a really great Drewism. Thank I know. <laughs> I was driving in the car. I was like, well, I'm going to have to transcribe this when I get to the office. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what were you able to pull for this week in Drew history? Okay. So the one I picked for this week, this would have been February 1st, 2004. So I didn't hit the exact date this time, but this one's a good one. So I wanted to pick it. Perfect. Drew and Adam Sandler attended the Super Bowl in Houston. They were promoting 51st Dates and uh, they were doing something with MTV. And this is a look that I really love. I know Jolena really loves. Is this one of your favorites? This look of Drew's? It feels like something I associate way more with you. Okay. I do love how happy and what's the other word I want to use? Like warm she looks in these pictures. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, I completely associate any like 51st date related <laughs> promotional stuff with you because I know you love her like long blonde extensions that she yeah. had during that time. I do love this look, but it's definitely something I think of you when I see. Okay. That's so funny. Yeah. And they, there's so many fun pictures and I don't know if I recall actually seeing like the MTV footage from this. Certainly we must have. I don't recall either. <laughs> I'll have to go on a little, a little hunt, but. Yeah, uh, I do remember the photos being printed on a lot of magazines and there's like a bunch of mascots and then somebody in the middle of the mascots brought an E.T. doll, <laughs> which is fun. <laughs> what the heck? I don't remember that. Right by Adam's face. I see it now, but I don't remember that at all. It's no so funny. weird. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but yeah, this is a really cute look. It feels, her shirt feels very 2004 for some reason. Oh, definitely. But like... <laughs> Something about like her belt and her like jeans. I don't know. She just looked like super haughty that day. I I was feeling it. <laughs> yeah, she she does look adorable. Super cool. Thank you for pulling that. That's awesome. Yeah, of course. That's what I'm here for. Okay, so I'm also now ready to hear what's new with our girl Drew. Okay. Speaking of Adam Sandler, <laughs> he's going to be receiving the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor in March. And Aww. apparently Drew is scheduled to appear and it's going to air on CNN. So stay tuned for that. But I thought it was worth mentioning that that was announced. Awesome. Yeah. Did you ever end up listening to last week's Drew's News podcast? I don't think so. Okay. So his name's Caleb Presley. And I 
I guess there's maybe like a humor that I'm not getting as what I'm taking away because I only saw like almost or across the board positive feedback about this but when I was listening to it I was like I don't like this guy like he had some takes that I thought were offensive but apparently like his thing is kind of satire so maybe I was just missing the point so my apologies if that's the case but anyway okay I'll have to let you know I'm sorry I haven't (laughs) caught up (laughs) that's okay um but then she went on so he like hosts I still don't really understand he hosts this show I'm gonna put in quotes but the YouTube videos are only like four minutes. I'm I'm definitely missing something about this whole situation, (laughs) but it's called Sunday conversation, but it's Sunday, like an ice cream Sunday. That's how you spell it. Okay. And again, I guess it's like satire, but Drew went on and that part's actually pretty funny. Again, I'm like, this guy's humor isn't for me, but Drew is like totally meeting him and matching him and being hilarious. So that's worth watching I definitely will include a link on the episode page again it's only like four minutes which I don't understand (laughs) there's a lot I don't get about the situation but Drew's hilarious in it so check it out (laughs) okay I'll let you know (laughs) um another thing I just have to pop in here this is so small but Uh, For all my Scream fans out there, my fellow Screamers, uh, the new Mm -hmm. Scream 6 trailer dropped. And there is a part where there is shown basically like a shrine or a museum of things that are either, it's kind of hard because there's an in-universe universe right because there's the movies within the movies yes, so I don't know yes. if there's these are supposed to be things related to the movies or related to the real life quote-unquote incidents that occur in this universe okay. but there's all this like memorabilia from the past movies and so one of the things that everyone clocked was you can see Casey's swing in, in this display room so oh wow was, yeah kind of cool I mean It's going to be really fun to see, but like from a realism standpoint, I'm like, how would anybody have all this stuff? This is like crime scene stuff, right? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't really make sense, but it's still fun to see. I'm still like, I'll definitely geek out during that scene when the movie comes out. (laughs) Cool. That's fun. Okay. We got a lot. I'm sorry. Let's keep going. (laughs) Well, I'm sure you saw this clip online that Drew dressed up as Megan, the doll. Yes. (laughs) I just thought that was really fun. The one with Ross really got me because I like Ross a lot and his humor like works for me really well. <laughs> yes, so, yes. His part where he's like, hey, <laughs> just was into it. It seemed like, okay, so the per- the guest they had on, was she an actress from it or is she the creator? She's the actress and the producer of the movie. Okay, so she seemed like freaked out a little bit by Drew. <laughs> she was definitely like, I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> and Drew's like going all in. <laughs> oh yeah. And you know, what's so funny is that Jolena and I separately, but both said the exact same thing. She's using the weird voice that her character has in the stand-in that voice. That's what she, well, I haven't seen the, the stand-in. I know you need to watch it so we can talk about it. Oh, interesting. But it's this very weird voice. And I was like, she doesn't sound like a little girl she sounds like that weird character <laughs> scary yeah I know that's what Jolena said yeah it kind of freaked <laughs> me out. also this just came out on the Drew Barrymore show's YouTube even though it was definitely recorded earlier Justin that's so long again he did mm-hmm. this really cute fun segment with Drew's little alter ego the comedy club owning <laughs> Mitzi yes. Bananamore yes <laughs> And it's really cute. I don't know why they've been holding on to it all this time, but it's really fun. Like, wait, you got to watch it. Yeah, I haven't watched that either. Is that what that little thing, that shirt that you sent me a picture of was? Um, No, she just happened okay. to be wearing that shirt in a video. So okay. she's wearing this shirt that is Banana Moors. And we did inquire about it. Apparently, that's the only one in existence is Drew's. <laughs> but I clocked that it reminded me so much of the shirt she's wearing in the David Letterman flashing that says I'm bananas over you yeah totally the the little banana that's on it really looks like that yeah so I thought I don't mean I don't know if Drew has consciously made that connection or not but 
anyway, I thought that was fun. But yeah, go check out Justin with the, with her. You know, she's always like a little inappropriate and flirtatious. And <laughs> yep. it's really good. I she really, that character. she commits to that character. <laughs> totally. I also, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be an impression of um, Polly Shore's mom, Mitzi. I think you did tell me that, which makes sense. Okay. She owned the comedy store, right? Yes, I think so. And I think she passed away a couple of years ago. Um, but either way, I haven't actually looked this up, but I know her name is Mitzi. So how could it not be? It's you gotta know? be. It's gotta yeah. be. <laughs> but anyway, okay, what else What else you got for us? Okay, so Ross and Drew went back on CBS Mornings. They've been showing up there a lot recently, which is fun. And they talked about the Razzie Awards. And Gail or somebody asked Drew if she'd ever gotten one or been nominated <laughs> for one. And she okay. was like, oh, I'm sure I have. And they're like, oh, what could have been? She's like, have you ever heard of a movie called Doppelganger? <laughs> She's like, or how about my cameo in Waxwork 2, which I'm dying that that keeps coming up all of a sudden. That is so funny. I also <laughs> think that um, Tom Green might have gotten a Razzie for Freddie Got oh, Fingered. Absolutely. I think yeah. he showed up. I think he was like one of the first people to show up and get the award. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> we'll have to check on that, but I'm pretty sure. That's so funny. But I love that Drew... <laughs> He has bring up like the other day someone asked me like oh like oh I know you love Drew like is there any movie of hers that's really bad I'm like yeah like for sure I'm like the first one I said was Doppelganger I was it like it's the go-to it's weird and I was like there are lots of weird ones I can't even remember the name of right now that's how like I've tried to forget them <laughs> <laughs> Drew, we love you. You know yes. you're in some strange films. <laughs> yeah, she owned it. I like it. Absolutely. Okay, very last thing. Um, this is literally today. Nia Long, actress, was on the show. I don't know if you saw this, was like kind of in the news recently, but she was discussing about how when she auditioned for Charlie's Angels, like she thought it went really well, it was great. And then she got feedback that she had her eyebrows were too sophisticated. And that she looked too old next to Drew. So, right. yeah. So Drew had her on the show. She's promoting something anyway, but she had her on the show today. And they talked about it. And it was a really good discussion. Like, And, you know, Nia said she really feels it was more like they weren't ready to put a Black woman in that role. And that they Whoa. had, you know, auditioned some people. And that reminded me that Thandi Newton was actually possibly even cast I think she was but Amy Pascal had said some things about the way they portraying her character that didn't sit right with her that felt you know racist so wow it's a really good talk and Drew you know takes ownership she said she didn't know about these this like feedback and that she would her and Nancy would like never have gone there but she wanted to bring it out in the open and talk about it. And so they had a great talk and Nia was totally like not blaming Drew at all, but uh, it was really cool. So I'll link to that as well. Wow. That sounds really fascinating. Lots of cool stuff this past week. It's been busy. We haven't recorded in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and if you listen to last week's episode, if we hadn't put in the little news things on last week's episode after yeah. like major events happened, this would have been even bigger. So, oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, are we ready for the weekly topic? Yeah, I know you are. I am, I, I am. I am. And I, we both love this. Um, yeah. We are doing the September, October issue of Jane magazine from 1997. It was the premiere issue of the magazine. We think that the photos were done somewhere around April of 1997 based on the, the way her hair looks like it's a very different hair look that she only had for like a very brief amount of time yeah it's like it's a... like everything in 97 <laughs> true <laughs> yeah this is a huge huge fave do you want to introduce who jane is sure okay so jane is jane pratt she had previously founded the very popular 90s magazine sassy mm -hmm. and then she went on to found jane Jane and Drew became friends in 1995. So we talked about this in our year in review 1995 episode, which mm -hmm. is a great one. So go listen to that. But yeah. basically she had been working as a correspondent for Extra and she mm -hmm. interviewed Drew and like accompanied her to events like the Batman Forever premiere, the K-Rock Weenie Roast. She was at Drew's house. Like she spent a lot of time with her. And I don't know if you already said, is this the one-on-one? -on -one? 
Yes. Yes. It was called Jane Pratt one-on-one as a segment yes. on extra. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Yes. Did we want to talk a little bit about the rumors? Sure. Okay. So for, I feel like for a while, there were rumors going around that Drew and Jane were kind of having like lesbian love and like, <laughs> and I feel like there were like it. pictures of them together, just like the way it was kind of in tabloids. Exactly. And I didn't remember the specific fact, but you pointed out here that Jane later said that she was misquoted. So she said, I didn't say I had sex with Drew Barrymore or I had sex with a famous person or whatever it says there. It's a little bit hard for me to not go back in there and go, I didn't say that. And then I just have to remind myself, this is what it's like when you're a little bit of a public figure. So I think so, we've kind of talked about this. <laughs> yeah. So who knows? I mean, I think, or we at least know that Drew explored bisexualism and has like, talked about that and that she had been with women, but we don't know who. We just kind of assumed like it might, might have been Jane, but it could be somebody we don't know at all. So, <laughs> so there it is. <laughs> yeah. So interesting. And, you know, it, I don't. I have no idea. I, I feel like the rumor went around for a while, but maybe not. When was it? When was this quote from? Um. No, it definitely went around for a while. It went around like in the '90s and was in tabloids in the early 2000s as well. Okay. And then Jane supposedly gave an interview to the New York Post, like in. I don't know. Let's call it 10 years ago. And okay. that's where it like came back in. And then the shoe okay. responded with this. So who knows? Okay. So that's why I'm thinking we like thought that for years. Yeah, we did. Okay. So now let's jump into the lovely photo shoot. Oh, <laughs> such a good one. So the photos were done by Carter Smith and they did reunite for a 2007 issue of Jane 10 years later, which is like just a fun little fact, but oh, that that's one's, cool. it's not as good as this one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the fashion editor was Monica Dolfini. The makeup was done by Carol Shaw. And apparently she's pretty known in the industry because she has her own brand called Lorac, which is her Carol backwards. And I guess it has oh, a cool. following. And then the hair was done by Neil Moody. And I actually have spoken with him on Instagram and asked him for some quotes. He hasn't gotten back to us yet. So we might have to uh, follow up on that. Okay. But I found an old blog post that he had made about this shoot, which was really fun. So the story he told was that Drew's people were concerned that Drew didn't know him before they did the shoot. Okay. And he thought he was going to like lose the job. But Carter Smith, the photographer, convinced them that Neil was good enough to do the job and that they wouldn't be disappointed. Aww. And then Neil said, and this is so great. I ended up getting on with Drew like a house on fire, sharing the same tastes in music and film. She was so sweet that she even sent flowers to my agency for me on my return to New York to thank me for doing such a great job and helping make her day more fun. Oh, isn't that cool? That's super cool. Great find. I know. It's so stoked to come across that. And Aww. I don't think his website is still up, but I happen to get it from uh, the Wayback Machine on the archive. So great find. Did you just randomly search for that? I or did you know about this? Weirdly, no, I did not know about it. I think this came linked from the Wikipedia entry on Jane Magazine. Oh, wow. A totally That's so cool. lucky find. <laughs> great, great research. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay, so I don't even know what I can say about these pictures that will do them justice. I mean, like, I'm crazy wild about them. Yeah, I mean, you, this is absolutely one of your favorite photo shoots, yes? Yeah, and I think I have at least two, maybe three copies of this magazine. <laughs> Seriously, because every time I get one, I'm like, oh, I just cherish it. <laughs> I have no idea. Like, this has got to be a little bit rare, right? I mean, maybe I... not because it was, like, super oh, no. widespread. But I'd be curious to, like, know if it's rare. It feels rare. But not because I have I had a hard time getting it. My first editor note, I just found Drew's issue of Jane Magazine for $50 on eBay. Whoa, right? Back to the pod. So anyway, so as I mentioned, she had this like short kind of dirty blonde hair with these baby bangs that she only had like very briefly, as yeah. Ashley noted, like maybe right around April. We know the London screen premiere, she has this yep. haircut. And then also yep. I was just thinking the Barbara Walters interview, she has this haircut. Yes. But I was going to say some, some talk show. Yeah. And then Jane Magazine. 
So it's this, like, it's so cute. Like, it's kind of a little bit, like, tomboyish, but then in this magazine, there are, like, parts where, like, her hair kind of is, like, flipped up a little bit. I, I just love it. I love short hair anyway. I always keep my hair short. So it's just, I don't even know. <laughs> How do we describe these wonderful pictures? So you, um, I guess we can talk a little bit of like about what she's wearing in them. Yeah, let's just go through them. <laughs> You're like overwhelmed. This is like me yeah. talking about scream. <sighs> yeah, oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so the cover, she has the baby bangs, as we mentioned. There's a cute little butterfly necklace on her, which is great. She's like smiling, maybe laughing even, and looking to the side. It's like a great close up. There was a different photo on the spine of the magazine, which was a yep. cool, like, that's such a fun little thing. I feel like yep. we're always into tiny things like that. I think Jane did that for a while. Yeah, I feel I like there's so the too. spines that were always really cute on them for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, su I subscribed to the magazine for a while. Me and too, I remember for a long like, time. Ha yep. And having them like on a shelf always looked super cute. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Um, And then there's also an alternate version of the cover. That yeah. was pictured behind Jane in her office in a like way later issue. So, yep. and that's the only place I've ever seen that picture. I, luckily yep. we have a scan of it. So I'll include it, but it's like a very similar, it's from the exact same setup. She's just kind of laughing in a different way. So yep, oh, love it. It's so cute. Gosh. So you just described the cover and I'm already like, oh, what do we do here? <laughs> so the first picture in the article is a full page basically close up of her face and she's laughing and she looks so like carefree and natural in these yeah and i think that starting the article this way is so like uh, it feels so drew i don't even think i can do it justice it sets the tone very correctly <laughs> yeah it sets the tone um this is also an amazing article we'll get into that but i feel like this picture feels like the article. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. And it's one of, let's see, only some of them are in color. So the cover is in color. The first picture is in color. And then there are two others in color, but they're primarily black and white. I guess it's about half and half. Gosh, I mean, I just want to like kind of say what my favorites are, but that's not, I don't know if that's really fair <laughs> to jump right in there. Well, we can keep describing them. The next part, there are three small black and white pictures where she's sitting in a chair. Uh, yeah. She's barefoot, which comes into play in the article as well. And you can see yeah. her tattoo cross in one of them, which we always love a tattoo peak. <laughs> yes, we do. And I've always wondered, unfortunately, the pictures are in black and white and I they might be flipped, but I've always wondered if she is wearing the same gray sweater that she wore on Letterman in 1998 to promote Ever After, because it looks really the same, but the stripes are going the other direction. Or the ribbing is going like another way. So I don't yep. feel confident to say 100% it's the same sweater, but it looks like it is. It very well could be. We'll put up a picture. Just I just want to <laughs> say about those, like, like her being barefoot that's one thing I love so much about these. That second image, black and white image, where she's got her toes <laughs> yes. kind of pointing up. So cute. I think what I love about this set of three, I can kind of talk about them as one thing. It's like contemplative and playful, mm -hmm. like at the same time. I mean, obviously the first and the third kind of have like both have a contemplative feel to them, but there's something so like calming i don't know if it's because they're black and white i don't know if it's the scene or the light i think it's everything there's a beautiful shot of drew's profile which i'm just really super appreciating right now for the first time i it's feel like it's such a good picture they're all yeah and like the playfulness in these definitely like she feels very childlike in the ones where she's being silly and cute yep in like a really good i mean that in a complimentary way <laughs> Yeah, I totally know what you mean. So the next piece is a full, another full page and Drew's mid somersault in this picture. And it's got like a soft focus to it, but you can completely read what's happening in the image. Like it doesn't matter that it's soft focus. It's again, we go back to playful. Lighting is beautiful. Like <laughs> I love that this is full page, like so much about it. Like I could just compliment every part of this. <laughs> yeah. And it is kind of, it's kind of a different one that you'd see in a magazine as a full page. I'm glad they gave it the space it deserves. <laughs> me too. Yeah, me too. Um, And then the last page of pictures, we have half and half. So I'll talk about that top half. Okay. The top half of the page is another black and white. 
and Drew's running through the yard of this house and we'll get into the house and you can't even see her face. It's obscured by some leaves, but you still get the total vibe. Like you still know what's going on. It still reads as adorable and playful. Yep. This is one of those images. Like if I were to describe it, like you just did, like you can't see your face. (laughs) Nothing does it justice until you see it. Like there's something about the feeling of it. And then I am so grateful this last one is going to me very selfishly. (laughs) This might be my favorite. I I love those three black and whites, but there's something about this too. Like she looks like a little girl. So I'll just describe it. She's sitting at like, looks like maybe like outside at a picnic table, I would guess. There's like kind of a plate of food in front of her. And then she's got this kind of, looks like a green or gray green sweater kind of like sinking off one shoulder her hands kind of by her face with her like sweaters coming up over her arms like there's something about it she looks like shy childish but again like there's a contemplative feeling about it the color in it somehow feels like really 70s but like in like a faded film kind of way like I mean that complimentary as well (laughs) but yeah this one like She looks so beautiful in all these. So beautiful. It's so naturally beautiful. This one always read to me like, was this even intentionally part of the shoot or were they taking a break and Carter took this picture and it's completely candid? Like, it it seems like it could be. That's a that's a good thought. I hadn't really considered that. It's just adorable. It's so so cute. cute. And I think she's wearing the same sweater in those two. Yes. The one where she's running and then the the, um, one sitting at the table. They're great. So that's all we get in the magazine, but there are outtakes out there, which we always are very appreciative and excited about. Yeah. And I think we didn't come across these outtakes till like relatively recently. Is that right? I remember these like appearing on a fan site or something like that. And it felt very exciting and like, whoa, this is so cool. Um, So we have somewhere she's hanging from a tree and I don't mean in a scream kind of way. (laughs) I mean like a little monkey. Yeah. There's more where she's being silly on the bed, like the somersault, but other ones where she's just having a blast. I love the one with her feet up in the air. And then there's some close-ups of her in a coat that are like a little more serious and beautiful. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. <laughs> but yeah, I basically died again when I saw the outtakes. Like I had already been killed by this <laughs> magazine and then I was killed doubly. R.I.P. Anne, your last episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So while I was looking at these images... It was pointed out to me the similarities of them to some of Marilyn Monroe's last photo shoots, which if, you know, if it hadn't been many years since this happened, that's a little bit of like a, oh, that could be kind of creepy to imagine that somebody's like (laughs) carefree images look like the last images of someone before they died. But either way, the reason that they said they reminded them of them. So if you want to look at Marilyn Monroe, George Barris, if you're not familiar, I know you are, Ashley. Yeah. There are these really beautiful photo shoots that were done of Marilyn. And in them, she seems sort of more herself and more comfortable in her skin than it seemed like she ever had. And when I looked back at these images, I started to really notice how like relaxed Drew is, how natural she is, the soft focus of them. Um, they really feel like they were taken on film, which I'm glad I'm I mean, I'm assuming they were. Yeah. And there's something about them I under I kind of understand. And then thinking about Jane magazine, it's like, what kind of magazine is this? It's kind of a magazine. Sassy was a magazine kind of for young women or marketed that way. And Jane, you know, it wasn't like a magazine where somebody had to kind of give in to the male gaze. So it was sort of neat to think of like a like Marilyn kind of being or Drew, you know, kind of becoming so comfortable in her skin that she didn't have to, like, be completely sexy or, <laughs> yeah. you know, that I there's something that. about that. And then the playfulness, like, Drew always talked about kind of, like, living her childhood because she never got to be a kid. Yeah. And so there's, like, all this, like, and I was like, oh, are you just trying to make me love this so much more? So having this conversation <laughs> earlier, I was like, my heart was melting even more for this photo shoot because I've always loved those images of Marilyn. Yeah, that's so and fun. Doing, doing that comparison was really fun. I love so, that. Yeah. Good good detail. Yeah. Howdy, Howdy Drewbies. We want to tell you about our sponsor, Positive Medium. We've actually been clients of theirs for at least 10 years, and they take care of all of our website needs for the Drewzam.com. 
They offer custom web design and professional coding, search engine optimization, marketing, and hosting. So we've been hosted by them, but we've also been able to take advantage of a lot of their expertise in these other areas as well. Absolutely. So customer service is the biggest draw for us with this company. They have saved our site literally from obliteration <laughs> quite a yep. few times. But then they also help us with minor issues in just like literally a matter of minutes. So if we have like a coding question or just like something on the back end we can't figure out, we reach out to them and we get an answer back and the issue is solved within moments. We're so excited that Positive Medium is allowing us to offer our listeners 25% off managed WordPress hosting plans using our promo code DREW, D-R-E-W, of course. Um, and if you want to take advantage of this, visit positivemedium.com. We really, really vouch for these people. They've been so great to us and will continue to be great to us, I, I can only imagine. <laughs> I mean, they're great by offering this to our listeners. So take advantage. Again, it's promo code DREW, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the article. So it was written by Jane Pratt, which makes sense. It's the first issue of the magazine. Yep. I will just note that the format of the article, when you're reading in the magazine, it switches off between the article and then there's these interspersed words by Drew, where it's like yep. Drew wrote them herself. So we're going to kind of put Drew's things at the end just to have mm -hmm. a better flow with the article. So just a little, little heads up. When you read it, because you can read the transcript on our episode page, it will be formatted a little differently. Awesome. That sounds good. Okay. So the interview and the photo shoot, which is so fun when it's at the same time, that doesn't happen yeah. often. I love that. I feel like you said one of the only other times you could think of was that 2000 article with the with the angels. You're right. In Vogue. Yep. Um, so they both happen at the same time. They take place at this old ranch house in Topanga Canyon. And it's described as surrounded by oaks and aloe and cacti. There's a giant teepee, a <laughs> 1956 Mercedes bus, star lamps, Buddhas. Like it's just supposed to be quote unquote whacked out, I think was yep. what it says. Yep. But like we can imagine like an eclectic sort Very. of canyon home. Yeah. And uh, I will get a little more into that little further on but that's the setting cool okay cool and there was a, a note in the article that um when drew and jane were making their way up there drew was reminiscing about a time and she said her parents um probably just her mom um used to bring her up to topanga canyon to visit some hippie friends who lived there which Topanga Canyon, if you know a little bit about kind of like the history of Topanga, there are a lot of musicians and there's a lot of history there from the 60s and 70s. So kind of cool. Yeah, it definitely tracks with the vibe of everything that we're getting here. And absolutely to follow up, like, I'm like, there's no way her dad brought her up there. Like, she didn't ever go anywhere with him, especially like together with the mom. I highly doubt it. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. But I do have to call myself out. This is literally the first time I've read this article, which I've read it many, many times, where I realized she wasn't saying that she used to come to that specific house. She used to just oh. come up. And I like, I was like, oh my God, all this time I thought she had visited this house before. I felt oh my God, so how stupid. funny. <laughs> she just meant the area. <laughs> That's really funny. Okay. So the article starts in Drew sitting on the porch under a wisteria laden trellis, which sounds so lovely. And yep. she's wearing a gray t-shirt and black corduroy bell bottoms. So 90s. And then the uh, bell bottoms have a cream colored butterfly on the butt, which is just <laughs> awesome. Unfortunately, we never get a picture of her cute little booty to see that, but <laughs> but we know it's there. I do love that it's briefly mentioned at the end when yes, she leaves. They're too. like, and there goes that butterfly. I know, it's so good. So cute. I also, I just love a corduroy. Me too. <laughs> So then some really, just really sweet little thing towards the beginning of the article, Drew noticed that a vine is coming in through kind of the edge of the house from the outside into the inside. She says to the homeowner, whose name is Ushi, I love that you're letting the vines grow through the house. This house has the best vibe. And you said you had a little background on the owner. So let's yeah, hear it. So I've been trying to find this house for a long time. <laughs> And unfortunately, I still haven't succeeded. I should rope Lindsay Blake into this hunt. Maybe she oh, can yeah. figure it out. But um, I did at least figure out who the owner was. So the owner, her name is Ushi Obermeyer. 
Um, mm-hmm. She's a former fashion model, actress. She is associated with the 1968 left wing movement in Germany, as you, okay. you know, we're all very familiar with that. <laughs> 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 she was linked to Jimi Hendrix and the Rolling Stones. So cool. I'm kind of getting that like almost famous groupie band-aid vibe, right? Okay. So I found her Topanga Canyon house and I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, I found the house. But as I like started making comparisons, because there are really good photos of this house out there, I was like finding nothing that matched up. And no. so then I dug a little further and it looks like the house that I found she had only bought in 2003. So it wasn't this one, but it's still worth checking out because I think the vibe is right on. Like, I don't think this cool. woman's vibe changed at all. And it definitely matches like sort of what you're picturing in your head for this one. So I'll keep looking. <laughs> Maybe she sold it, then bought it back. <laughs> <laughs> but you said it didn't match. Yeah, nothing matched. Okay. Up. Yeah. Okay. That's so cool. Thanks for trying to find it. And I, I love know. the little details you did find. Thanks. That's really cool. So in the article, it mentions that the makeup artist, which we know who that is, it was, what's her name? Carol Shaw. Mm-hmm complimented drew skin um and they talk about another actress who left a photo shoot because of a zit (laughs) and then drew kind of goes on and says how rude pimples are which is really cute and they also discuss how vocal cords look which is such a weird thing but then i love what she says yeah me too so she said she saw an image of hers when she had a tonsillectomy and she said they're so beautiful like the hairs on a violin bow, it's so which is so pretty. I know. I always visualize that perfectly from that quote. Yeah. And I love that she mentions a tonsillectomy because in our last magazine episode, which was Us 1997, that yep. comes up there as it was, you know, she spent Christmas 1995 alone sitting in a bathtub crying while she was recovering, recovering from the tonsillectomy. So oh, it's sort yeah. of fun to like hear about that again. Yeah, totally. We love we love imagining Drew in a bathtub crying. <laughs> On Christmas alone. <laughs> yeah. It really warms my heart. <laughs> and the last thing she said in this little chunk was that she doesn't like hearing the sound of her own voice, which Ashley and I, you, we've been talking about this a lot lately, <laughs> and I've had to get used to that. It's definitely something I've had to get used to. So I bet Drew has had to get used to it, too. Like, she's got to hear, like, little clips of her voice doing the show and everything. Like, Oh, totally. It'd be interesting to hear her say how she feels about her voice now. Like, these days. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. She also mentions the difficulty of finding shoes that aren't made of leather, because this is, like, mm-hmm. supposedly she was vegan. We can get into that a little. <laughs> I'm not trying. <laughs> you'll, you'll see. <laughs> says about that. I'm such a nerd, but I never surrender. And she raves about the sauce at in and out and says, it's so good. It's like a circus in your mouth. That's kind of a <laughs> Druism right there. And yep. she's raving about fake bacon. Um, I have to ask you, doesn't the sauce at in and out have dairy in it? I mean, I would think it would. Okay. <laughs> that, this is why I'm like, I don't think she was really vegan, but in that realm. I mean, it also could be like 1997 people were just throwing around vegan because yeah. nobody knew what it meant. That's I what mean, I, I think. Know. That's what I think. So, yeah. I mean, she says that she loves animals and she doesn't want to eat or wear them, which totally, I'm, I think that's yeah. what she meant. Um, she also mentions that she bought a hot diggity dogger, which is a, <laughs> an appliance that cooks a hot dog and a bun at the same time. Uh, she bought that for Luke as a gift, which is cute. <laughs> and I like how there, I don't know if you made a note about it, but she's like, Something about Luke not being vegetarian. Like, are you kidding? He's from Texas. Yeah, or something like which that. is so good. Um, but yeah, she does say she considers herself vegan. But then I'm like, well, mac and cheese is her favorite food in the world. So yeah, she's always said <laughs> that mac and that. cheese is her favorite. <laughs> it might be like she tried to eat vegan often and then she just had her weaknesses. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. Either way, not vegan, Drew. We still love you. <laughs> yeah. She talks about the show Melrose Place and loving that show, which, which she had raved so about in Bizarre 96. And yes. some other articles, too, I think. It was definitely, like, a big love of hers at this time. She says that she was excited. She ran into Kelly Rutherford, who was on the show at some point, and they had a chat, and it was like they were talking about all the recent plot points, but Drew, you know, said, don't tell me what happens. Like, she didn't want any spoilers. And then I just thought that was kind of funny because Kelly ended up being, spoiler, um, the first kill in the opening of Scream 3, which doesn't even come close to touching the brilliance of Drew's opening, but still fun little connection. (laughs) That is a fun connection. (laughs) So they also talk about this fish in Belize that Drew thinks is so cool, can reproduce by itself. 
Drew says, that's so groovy and empowering. Too bad people can't do that. <laughs> They'd be by themselves all the time. <laughs> so cute that's so like this era of drew i could just see her loving this i don't know it just tracks so perfectly to me like, everything about it yeah like <laughs> i think this is a perfect article perfect of, like everything i know so the music on the boom box which i love that they had a boom box it's mentioned twice yep it starts with more sheba which i listened to so i started the article it mentioned that i'm like Alexa, play more Chiba. <laughs> I love. And then yeah. I, I only know who they are because they have a song that I love so much in Biorhythm about Drew. Oh, how funny. Yeah. How funny. It's funny because I was like, I think they're in Biorhythm. So I'm glad you brought yeah. that up and confirmed that. So then the music goes to Daft Punk, which Drew has talked about loving them many times. Yep. Um, and she starts dancing around. It says she stirs the pot, which I think is where you like put your finger down in a circle and spin around. <laughs> I don't know. I wanted to look up what that meant. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, and she says that the music is so sexually forward. <laughs> yep. Is which is kind of true. Like there's, there was something about this kind of genre called trip hop at that time, which had a very like sexual feeling to it. So I can totally, I totally know what she's talking about. Love it. Then they talk about the Letterman flashing and Drew said, that was so fun. One of the best moments of my life. It was so spontaneous and so out of body. I can't believe I did that. I would never have the nerve now. Like we know that this is how she felt. Like we, <laughs> she said this many times in different ways. I think this is the perfect quote to embody her feeling about it. Yeah. And I would say she probably feels the same way now. Definitely. Yeah. It also mentions that she's been barefoot all day. Like we see in the photos, which is great. Yep. She said she doesn't have a lot of use for shoes or clothes. <laughs> and supposedly she says she lived out of a duffel bag for three years while looking for a house, but that doesn't really track timeline. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know if that's true. I, I mean, we, we know that a Drew exaggerates. Exaggeration, yeah. She might've done that for a minute, like going, like staying with friends and just having a bag. I kind of get it, but three years, <laughs> pro probably not the case. Probably not. <laughs> um, Drew also said, that she carries a journal that she keeps private because it's like being alone and in your truest state. Totally true. Oh. And then she said in her bag, she has hand cream, moisturizer, and baby wipes, quote, so I can refresh myself all day. <laughs> Are there other articles where she talks about baby wipes? Because for some reason, I carried baby wipes in high school because of her. Well, I know that was one of the trivia questions in that newsletter that we both- Oh, how fun! I don't know why I remember that forever. I've never forgotten that. So, that's so great. <laughs> that's probably why the article then at this point mentions that Flossie is there with her the whole time, which oh, is so cute. We love Flossie. Yeah. Um, Templeton was at obedience school. We mentioned that in our Flossie and other pets episode. <laughs> yep. They go into the TP and it has its candles that are honoring saints. And Drew says it's a great place to zen out, even though the rocks hurt to sit on. Um, oh. And we have these incredible photos. I don't know the source of them of Drew and Flossie in the TP. And these are like outtakes and they're Oh, so gorgeous. They're so rad. They're so rad. And the for some reason, the scan that we have, it's like written out to someone named Gina and it says lots of love and DB. So like she, what did she give these to somebody? I was so confused, but oh my God, they're rad. Ah. They're so rad. And then the last part before we get into Drew's own little quotes, it says at the end of kind of her shoot, she goes and hugs every person on the crew. Makes sense. I can totally see that. <laughs> and then um, she sits in the driveway and cleans her feet with a baby wipe. Because as we said, she had no shoes on. <laughs> she gets in the car with Flossie and shouts, the nerds are leaving. <laughs> Perfect. Perfection. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back with Drew's words. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go through the little segments that are written in Drew's words in first person. Okay. So the first one is, she says, I believe in astrology, yoga, and psychology. I believe in every religion that exists. I believe in it for every person who believes in it, but nature is my temple. So that's kind of the focus of the first one. She's talking about all these things she believes in. She also says she believes in many lifetimes and fate, but she thinks the important thing is that you seek out the reasons why things happen and learn from them. And I 100% agree with that. Yeah. All those thoughts are fantastic. Yep. I'm like, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Learn from your freaking mistakes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and go love nature. <laughs> yes. Um, for some reason, I felt an interesting 
okay, I'll just say like this is the first time I ever really kind of felt like a soft spot for Jade. Okay. And I don't remember noticing this before. Interesting. I don't know. She doesn't really talk about her mom in a way like this way, usually. Yeah, I agree. So she said she had been thinking recently about how she got green eyes from her mom and she got her mom's love of reading. She said like her watching her mom like pull out a book every night and read was one of her favorite things. I thought it was really sweet. And then um, she said she also got her taste of music from her mother, like the Beatles, which I didn't know that that like had come from her mom i just never really thought about it. i didn't remember that either until reading this which is fun. yeah so that was kind of neat and then she said she feels like she physically texts after her dad and then she relates to his always wanting to be free and his interest in religion and na nature and then i was like what does she mean she takes physically after him and i'm like okay i guess i see like maybe the profile maybe like small in stature but i think jade is as well yeah so in what ways do you think she was referring um, I would say like kind of the Barrymore jeans has got to be what she means there. Yeah. Okay. She doesn't actually like strikingly look like either of her parents to me. That's true. And it, it's it, Jade has just tried to look more like Drew through. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jade. We know you have. I, I actually, you know, I, I loved that this was a really brief but positive take on what she has gotten from her parents yeah it was it was neat especially because like i feel like most articles she has to sort of talk about how uncomfortable she is about them so yeah this is a nice change yeah agreed she also says that she thinks that life is about love being kind to people having fun laughing hard every day this is like all of this still tracks yes. for her yes. and then she also yes. says it's important to have patience especially while driving in LA <laughs> relatable <laughs> definitely relatable and as someone who just moved far 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 away from LA <laughs> I don't miss the traffic I don't what? have to like I don't have to leave the west side before 2 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yes, yes, yes on all of these. And I love that we, like, I'm going to pencil this in right now. I feel like when the time comes that we have her on the show, I yeah. feel like we should read this to her and she will love that she still agrees with all of this. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> so I, I liked this little part because she said she thinks it's good to be in a relationship, but also keep a sense of yourself and your independence. And in this part, it says something like, it's talking about like single life and like why it would, doesn't it kind of say like, it's good to be single, but I'm in a relationship right now. So I'm looking at it from this perspective, like something yeah. like that. And I liked that because I also think it's really important to keep a sense of yourself and your independence. I've had huge changes in the relationship. I'm talking about myself personally now. I've had huge changes in the relationship world as have you in the last several years. And like, <laughs> it's so important to they say like love yourself before you love somebody else like it's kind of about that like knowing who you are like come on drew this is so like how old is she at this at this point 22 yeah but you know what's interesting is i don't feel she really did that did that or would say she did that now i feel like she feels that this way now so i thought that's really cool to look back on because she has said in recent times that like she used to sort of lose herself in her relationship. Yes. Yes. And I, I'm, so it's kind of like for her to be saying it then, I guess you, the, I guess the truth is with any of this stuff, like, you know, what's best and you still have a hard time doing it. So <laughs> I would say this would be another example of something she would preach now. Okay. We definitely just have to go through this whole article with her. That's, that's what, that's what <laughs> I'm learning. Good. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, the next little segment, she says that she loves learning every day. She just finished reading Memory, Dreams, and Reflections by Carl Jung, and she wants to understand the mind so she can be more comfortable with the way people are. Which is a cool thought. Totally cool. Come on, Drew. Like, you're the best. <laughs> I also loved this part. So she said she thinks intimate love is the most beautiful thing in the world, and she can always talk openly about sex. I don't know if she always talked openly about sex, but I like that how she says it here and just like how wonderful intimacy can be with the right people. Yeah. Um, she also mentioned the Female Health Foundation and how important safe, healthy sex is. And she said she feels really lucky to have the opportunity to work with the Female Health Foundation. I think she was like a s official spokeswoman for yeah. them for and this was at like least a couple of years. Mac in the middle of that because it started in 96 and we know at least went through 98. So yep. That's yep. so cool that she, I love that she's like, and I'm going to work that into this article because I think it's important. <laughs> yep. Cool. I love it. The next segment, 
this, I love this. She says she feels freer without possessions, much like her dad, <laughs> which, mm. you know, she's talked about that a lot, which I, yep. I kind of like that callback. Yep. The quote is, and this is great. I find that when I don't have so much, I'm more aware and appreciative of what comes to me. Mm -hmm. Good one. I love that. Again, I feel like she would totally vibe out on that currently. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Amazing. And then this next one, everything here, we just, I don't, I don't think we can say enough how much we love it, but she said she's learning to trust her instincts. The quote here is, I'm getting more aware as I get older. I always used to say, you're fearless when you're a kid and you're fierce when you're older, but there's something that happens in the meantime when you're trying to figure things out. So this part in the article, one thing I kind of took note of is she said something about like having made a big, does she, I don't know if she uses the word mistake. She said, one time I didn't trust my instincts. I won't tell you what it is, but that was the moment in my life when I learned to trust them. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> so I so I think that she was talking about, I, I'm just assuming that she was talking about her marriage to the British gent. <laughs> kind of an accident. <laughs> no, I completely agree. A thousand percent. I would be shocked if this was about anything besides that, because she has always said that was the time she wasn't true to herself. Yep. Oh, good catch. And I don't think Drew, I, I hate that I said mistake, but it's just like something that she's acknowledged like, ugh. I did yeah. that foolishly, but you know, all of this self-awareness, I think this article is a lot about self-awareness. Mm, definitely. You know? Yeah. The very last little bit that we have of Drew's words, she's talking about beauty. She talks about butterflies and the metamorphosis and we, mm -hmm. of course, why she loves that so much. And the quote is, and this is kind of the ending of the whole thing. They prove you can be beautiful and then become even more beautiful. It could be said that the sky's the limit on it. You can become as beautiful as you want to be. Beauty is a good thing. Oh, that's great. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just send that to her and be like, who wrote this? <laughs> hey, Drew, do you agree with all of these words? <laughs> <laughs> Whose words do you think they are? When do you think you said them? <laughs> <laughs> Probably yeah. about 30 years ago. <laughs> I know. God, Ugh, it really is close to that. I was, I was joking. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I was <laughs> trying to make just... it sound like way more. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This is just like very cool that the article was done this way where I'm assuming, I don't know if this is Drew just like talking to Jane or if Drew wrote these things later on to be That's inserted. That's a good question. It's yeah. really cool though. It's very unique. And I'm guessing that it was just like a long day that was recorded and yeah. then Jane pulled them because I, you know, the, actually thinking about this article and the whole thing kind of makes me try to imagine what the day was like because of the Jonathan Van Meter conversation mm. that he often would like spend multiple days when he was doing a profile. And I realize this is different than a profile, but I just wonder like what it looked like. Was Jane there all day? I'm guessing yeah, she was. I would guess so and, too. And, you know, was she recording the whole time? You know, like, I don't know. It's just fascinating to think about. But yeah, this this is a really important magazine to me. And I think a lot of Drewbies from around this time probably have a special place in their heart for this. I don't know why it's so deep in my heart, but <laughs> it's it just makes me really happy. So I'm so thank you for doing this episode. Yeah. And I think like all the other magazines we've featured, this is now the fourth one. They these particular ones happen to get like close and intimate with her in a yep. different way than a lot of other articles maybe sometimes do where they feel a little more surface. We've chosen yep. the ones where you really feel like you're spending time with Drew and it feels really natural. And I think yep. that's why they speak to us so strongly. Yes. And ones that we feel like are very true to her. Like it's not yeah. just that we like, we're getting close to her, but we also feel like, yeah, this is her. This is, ex this exemplifies her as a person. And I feel like, like we've said, this one really feels like she would be so consistent and have the same feelings and same wisdom. Like, oh, wow, I've realized this over and over in my life. And actually that's, this is just a little message to pull out of this. I feel like if you have a realization and it feels really good and you lose grasp of it i think that's okay you can just re like relearn it you have to just like re-meditate on these amazing things in your life and thanks for the reminder of that drew <laughs> well said i love that well now i guess the next <laughs> goal is to like get these quotes to her again because i feel like she'd have a real appreciation yep. for them now yep i think just so watch too. on the show she's ross is gonna start reading them to her or something <laughs> 
then we'll know they're listening and pulling our ideas. <laughs> they're listening to us. <laughs> if you're listening, take out Jane Magazine. <laughs> Well, for those of you who are listening, we very much appreciate you tuning in. Yes. I'm getting to sound like an old broken record here, but <laughs> gosh, guys, please give us some more ratings and reviews. I know it helps get us out there more. And as much as we love being kind of like our little podcast who could, we're, <laughs> we're down for more listeners. Like that would be fun. We'd love to. Yep keep having the resources to do this for you guys we both want to buy new mics like <laughs> <laughs> yes we do i'm just gonna be honest <laughs> so do what you can we really appreciate it. it only takes a minute and then you can come over and follow us on instagram at how do you drew pod for more fun content yeah and don't forget to visit our website at how do you drew.com where we'll have a new episode page every week including this week you got to check out these pictures especially if you've never seen them yeah and even if you have seen them go relive the beauty and majesty of them <laughs> and the outtakes oh god. oh god yeah and send listener mail to how do you drew pod at gmail.com voice message anything you know what? Anything. It could even be like, hey, you guys haven't done this particular magazine. This one's my favorite. Can you go through that one? We would love that. We love doing the magazines. They're so fun. And we will see you next Tuesday. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. This episode of the How Do You Drew podcast was researched and produced by Ashley and Anne from the Drewzium.com with help from our sponsor, Positive Medium. Special thanks to Matt Costa for our lovely theme song, Roxy Prima for our adorable logo, and last but not least, Drew Barrymore and all the Drewbies who love her. We do this for you. Thank, Thank you. you.